Mr. Chairman, uh, Honorable Representative, I thank the Friends of a Free Iran Committee in the European Parliament for organizing this conference on December 10, the 66th anniversary of the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I pay respect to hero and heroines who made the ultimate sacrifice in the campaign to safeguard this ideal. It is ironic and sad that on Human Rights Day, Iran is again covered in blood. Only in two past weeks, the mullahs executed 50 more people. In Orumia prison, dozens of tortured victims are in the 20th day of their hunger strike. Thousands are on the death row. Dozens of sick prisoners are denied access to medicine and medical treatment and are being worn out to the point of death. In view of the situation, I would like to ask EU governments a simple question. How could continued relations with this barbaric regime be considered legitimate? Has anything changed under Rouhani? The UN Secretary General and Special Rapporteurs on the situation of human rights in Iran say no, nothing has changed. The reality goes far beyond this. There is no such thing as human rights in Iran. This regime has founded its pillars on the blood of 120,000 executed political prisoners. 30,000 of them were executed in 1988 in a matter of few months by Khomeini's fatwa. The Mullah's constitution, the penal code, uh, the civil code, uh, the laws adopted by the regime's parliament are all based on the violation of human rights. Look at the events of the past year. In April, the security forces launched a bloody attack on Evin prison uh, where political prisoners are held. In October, the authorities organized the wave of acid attacks on women in Isfahan and other cities under the pretext of malveiling. Doctors have said that some of these victims must undergo at least 50 operations. This is a picture from these women. In November, Basij militias stabbed and injured a number of women in the town of Jahram. These attacks were coordinated after speeches and orders by the regime's authorities and Khamenei's representatives. A new legislation uh, ratified by the regime's parliament provides uh, protection for those who carry such attacks. Since Rouhani became president, at least 1,200 have been executed, including uh, at least eight adolescents. At the same time, the suppression of ethnic minorities, such as Arabs, Baluchis, and Kurds, as well as the arrest of Sunnis, uh, Dervishes, Christians, and Baha'is have stepped up. In the past 25 years, we have not seen as many executions as in the first year of Rouhani's presidency, nor have seen so many opposition members being massacred or taken hostage, nor have we seen Iranian women being target of such criminal campaigns to this extent. 
on April 19th this year, Rouhani said, when someone is sentenced to death, it is either the will of God or based on a law that the parliament has ratified. We are only carrying out what the law says. In October 26-year-old Rehani Jabari was hanged after seven years in prison for defending herself against harassment. Despite widespread opposition in Iran and calls by human rights organizations for her release, Rouhani's administration, through its intelligence ministry, actively worked to get her executed. Dear friends, the nuclear talks with the mullahs in the past year continued uh, in parallel with the rise in executions in Iran. In addition, the regime is engulfed in a destructive power struggle at the top. More importantly, Iranian society is deeply discontent and on the verge of another uprising. Uh, three days ago, on the anniversary of the Students' Day in Iran, students from different universities, despite uh, severe security measures by the Mullah's brutal forces, uh, defied the dictatorship ruling Iran by chanting, political prisoners must be freed. Therefore, now is the time to intensify the pressure on the Mullah's regime. Uh, Mullah's agreed to negotiate due to mounting pressure stalled on signing agreement due to concessions. The only way forward is more pressure and more sanctions. Masoud Rajavi, leader of the Iranian resistance, once referred to this issue and said, Mullahs want to cover the inherent weakness of a regime which has reached its end by enriched uranium. But before obtaining the so-called nuclear energy, uh, is it not the Iranian people's certain right to enjoy freedom, uh, sovereignty, jobs, bread, and housing? Honorable representative. On Human Rights Day, I also draw the attention of the European Parliament to the continuing siege of Iranian dissidents at Camp Liberty in Iraq. The Iraqi government has put a siege on the residents of Ashraf and Liberty for the past six years. They have imposed a ban on commute and on visiting with even their lawyers. They have also imposed an inhumane medical siege which has so far led to the death of 22 <coughs> residents. And recently, at the behest of the IRGC, the Pastara, uh, the Iraqi forces have once again started a psychological torture on the residents with powerful loudspeakers. This is the picture around the Camp Liberty. These same tortures were perpetrated on the residents in 2011 and 2012 with uh, 320 loudspeakers at Camp Ashraf. Therefore, I urge EU to ask the Iraqi government to respect the rights of Camp Liberty residents and uh, to change its policies uh, and show firmness in the face of the brutal theocracy ruling Iran. A new approach should include the following. Political and commercial ties with the Iranian regime are subjected on improvement in the situation of human rights, especially a halt in execution and torture. Those responsible for these crimes, namely the regime leaders, must face justice. The Iranian regime is forced to implement fully Security Council resolutions 
halt uranium enrichment and accept SNAP international inspection of all suspect sites and centers. And the siege on Camp Liberty, especially the medical blockade, is ended and liberty is handed over to institutions that have no ties with the uh, Iranian regime. The realization of these demands not only benefits the people of Iran and the region, but is also crucial to global peace and security. Because the PMOI and the Iranian resistance are the only solution uh, and alternative vis-a-vis -vis the Mullah's regime, a dictatorship ruling Iran. Uh, and it is the only alternative vis-a-vis -vis the fundamentalism and terrorism in Iran and in the Middle East. Uh, and terrorist groups such as Hezbollah and ISIS are the result of fundamentalism and terrorism in Tehran. The Iranian resistance based on separation between uh, religion and the state, based on equality between men and women, and freedom and democracy for all of the people in, the, uh, in Iran and for all of the people in the Middle East, and also peace and security for all of the world. And it is the objective of the Iranian resistance. And I'm sure that uh, with uh, your support, avec votre soutien, the Iranian resistance will arrive the objective of the freedom and democracy in Iran. Thank you very much.